Okay, in this video, we're gonna to continue to do a ton of series multiple choice questions. This is part seven. The other six parts are no doubt in a playlist, either linked above or below in the description. Um, let's get going. So we're up to question number 55. If a sub k is equal to negative one to the k for k equals zero and onward, which of the following statements about the infinite series, the sum from zero to infinity of a sub k is true? Okay, so uh, if a sub k is just negative one to the k, then uh, you're just bouncing between one, negative one, one, negative one. That does not converge. That like is a very famous series that doesn't converge and in some ways is the start of all of the infinite series that people decided to study. So we're saying that this diverges uh, and our reasoning will be that the limit uh, is not zero. The limit actually doesn't exist, right? Because you literally are getting negative one or one. You are never getting anything else. All right, next problem. Consider the sequence a sub k equals the square root of k plus 1 minus k, which is equal to 1 over the square root of k plus 1 plus radical k. So uh, they're doing you a favor there by showing you that. Um, if they didn't show you that, I think they would always show you that. Um, but if they didn't, you know, that's a hint. Maybe rationalize sometimes uh, if, if you're not sure what a series is doing, because I think we're going to use both forms to determine some stuff about this. Um, and uh, the infinite series is the sum from one to infinity of a sub k, which of the following is true. All right, so uh, the first thing I notice about all the answer choices is that they look at the limit as k approaches infinity, so I'm gonna look at the limit as k approaches infinity because it can probably eliminate, well, it'll definitely eliminate two of the answer choices. So if I take the limit as k approaches infinity, I'm gonna use the fractional form that they gave me because that's kind of, it's easy to just eyeball that and see that that limit is gonna be zero. So since the limit is zero now, either my answer is A or C, coin flip if I don't know what I'm doing, but I think I know what I'm doing. Um, but still, it was helpful, right? Now we gotta decide if this converges or diverges. I'm not really sure, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start listing out some terms. So basically I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna find the first however many I think is necessary and then think about it out at you know A sub K. So now I'm gonna write those terms. I'm not gonna make you watch that. So when I plug in one, I get radical two minus radical one, I'm just writing it that way. And then when I plug in two, I get radical three minus radical two, radical four minus radical three, and so on. And then at the end, I'm getting radical uh, k plus one minus radical k. So all of these are coming from plugging in various values for k. Now, if you look at it, some of these are gonna cancel, right? It starts with radical two, but then eventually there's a minus radical two. Then there's a minus radical one, that never cancels with anything. That's gonna live forever. Then we have root three and a minus root three. We have a root four and a minus root four. That root five, you know there's a minus root five in there somewhere. So the partial sum, the kth partial sum of this, to me, is gonna be negative root one, which is just negative one, plus the square root of k plus one. So that's if we stop at k. Everything except those two terms will have canceled out. So now the sum of a series is the limit of the partial sums. So all I need to do is figure out the limit of this thing. But the limit of this thing is definitely infinity because that radical k plus 1 is just going to keep growing. And so uh, we know the limit is 0. We know that the series diverges. That's our answer. All right, let's take a look at another one. Which of the following series converge? So this is a good one. Um, we have, they're, they're like basically P series, except the last one is alternating. So we'll have to think about that. So the first option, number one, is a p-series with p equals two, so that's gonna converge because two is greater than one. All right, and then for option two, that is the harmonic series. Famously, it's divergent, um, so I'm gonna write no because it's the harmonic series, but you might also say it's a p-series where p equals one because one is not greater than one. And now we just need to figure out if the third one converges. The third one is alternating, so I'm thinking alternating series test. Um, it alternates, the terms decrease in magnitude, and the limit is zero. This definitely converges by the alternating series test. So we have yes, no, yes, that's one and three. I think the answer is D. All right, new problem. Which of the following series can be used with the limit comparison test to determine whether the series, um, the sum from one to infinity of n squared over n cubed plus one converges or diverges. Halfway through reading these, I just forget what I'm doing sometimes. Um, okay, so as I've done with most problems like this, step one is ignore the part that's not really contributing much, which is gonna be, um, if I take the original series, 
that plus one in the denominator, if we're out at infinity, what's infinity cubed plus one? It's just infinity cubed. The plus one's not really doing anything. So this series is basically the same as one over n. n this, or n squared over n cubed, which is gonna be one over n. Um, that's how we do these. When we're looking for a series to compare it to, ignore everything except the dominant terms and see what those give us. So this gives us one over n. I would like to limit compare with one over n. So I think the answer is a. All right, let's take a look at another one. If the series uh, from one to infinity, negative one to the n plus one, uh, one over two to the n plus one is approximated by the partial sum with 15 terms, what is the alternating series error bound? Okay, so it's a, a convergent alternating series by the alternating series test if you want, but they're just telling you that. Um, so I need to know where to start. So alternating series is gonna be the, fir the errors first term left off. To figure that out, I need to know the last term that I write. If I use 15 terms and I start at one, then I'm gonna use one through 15 for my 15 terms, and then n equals 16 will be the first term left off. So if I let n equals 16 and I go up and sub in and find the magnitude of that term, so that's gonna be one over two times 16 plus one, which is one over 33, that's the magnitude of the first term left off. That is the alternating series error. So we're going with D. All right, new problem. The series, the sum from one to infinity, negative one to the K plus one, A sub K, converges to S where A sub K plus one, okay, zero is less than A sub K plus one is less than A sub K. I have a lot of trouble reading that for all K. If S sub N is equal to the sum from one to n, sorry, if s of n is equal to the sum from 1 to n, I was expecting an infinity, uh, negative 1 to the k plus 1 a sub k. Is the n, oh my god, is the n partial sum of the series, which of the following statements must be true? All we got to do is figure out what's true here. All right, so um, the limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n is equal to 0. I mean, that's not true, I'm going to say. Uh, in fact, we... Uh, it's, it's S because we're told the series converges to S, right? Um, so that would be the limit of the partial sums is the sum of the series, so that's S. Uh, the limit is that approaches infinity of A sub N is equal to S. No, we actually know because the series converges that the limit as N approaches infinity of A sub N is equal to zero. Otherwise, the series would not converge, but we know it converges to S. So maybe that's a common misconception. I don't know. The absolute value of s minus s sub 10, so the 10th partial sum, less than or equal to a sub 16, I don't know why you would think that at all. <laughs> um, I don't know where that's coming from. Um, and also, it doesn't even need to be true, right? Because uh, the first term omitted is the upper bound on the error. So s sub 11 would be the upper bound on the error. s sub 16 is smaller, maybe smaller than that, a sub 16. Oh, yeah, yeah, a, a, that should be a sub 16, not s sub 16. s sub 11, a sub 11, I got this. Everybody, I got this, it's been a long video. I mean, this one individually, not that long. Oh, you can see like, I'm um, accidentally, hold on, hold on. I got this, maybe. I'm not redoing this, I don't care, here we go. That's a, a 11. Okay, so that's what it should be, not a sub 16. And then finally, since we eliminated all the other ones, that must be the answer, but um, the difference between the true sum and the 15th partial sum will be the first term omitted, which would be the 16th term, which would be a sub 16. So this is our answer. That should say a sub 16, and I'm not going to change it. So let's take a look at the next problem. If the cosine of b is equal to one third for a constant b, then the sum from zero to infinity of sine squared of b to the n is equal to. This seems like more than you would have to do in the typical AP problem, but it's a good question. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, there's a relationship between sine and cosine that I'm sure you know. It is that um, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. So I know that cosine is one third. So I mean, sine squared is gonna be one minus cosine squared. If cosine is one third, sine squared is one minus one third squared. So Sine squared is actually just eight ninths. So really, the sum of sine squared to the n is the sum of eight ninths to the n. 
And now I just need to do a convergent geometric series. So it's going to be the first term, which is 1 over 1 minus the ratio, which is 8 ninths. That gives me 9 as my answer. That's a pretty good problem. It's got a little, as I mentioned, it's got more going on than I think would actually be on the uh, exam, but still, super good question. All right, next question. Consider the series, the sum from one to infinity of e to the n over n factorial. If the ratio test is applied to the series, which of the following inequalities results, implying that the series converges? Okay, so we just got a ratio test, which is like my favorite thing to do. So we do the n plus first term, which is e to the n plus 1 over the quantity n plus 1 factorial, times the reciprocal of the nth term, which is n factorial over e to the n. Technically, there should be absolute values around that, but everything is positive, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, and then we can cancel the n factorial and n plus 1 factorial cancels down to 1 over n plus 1, and then the e to the n just cancel to leave us with just e in the numerator. So we are getting the limit as n approaches infinity of e over n plus 1, and then that has to be less than 1 if we're going to converge. So our answer is D. We're going to do one more question in this video. Then I will be back in another video to finish off all these problems that I decided to uh, type up and solve. So what is the value of the sum from 1 to infinity of 2 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n? This is a geometric series. And because it's geometric, I like to rewrite it so I can definitely see r. So in this case, I'm going to make 2 to the n plus 1 into 2 times 2 to the n. And then I'm going to group everything that's raised to the n. So it's just 2 and then 2 thirds to the n. We're definitely starting at 1. So that n equals 1 is really important here because it's going to be the first term over 1 minus the ratio. So if I plug in 1, I get 2 squared over 3 to the first and then over 1 minus 2 thirds. So that's going to give me 4 thirds over 1 third which gives me 4, which is the final answer, so I'm going to choose C. All right, that does it for this video. I will be back in the next video. It'll be the last one in the series, and uh, I hope you find this helpful, and good luck.